Hey guys, another month has gone by. Welcome to the pickups video for August of 2018 where we have a look at all the items that we purchased, donations to the channel and stuff that companies sent us to check out. Have a look in the description. There are time codes and any relevant links to anything shown in this video. So first up, we've got some sodium memory. This will help out with our uh, thin client videos. So these are DDR2 memory and two gigabytes each. Also for the thin clients, I needed some storage, so I bought a range of SSDs. Here we have a Vaseki. This is a 64 gigabyte MSATA SSD. This one is uh, brand new. I bought it from AliExpress. Works fine. I also bought a used SanDisk. This is a little bit larger. I think it's 128 gigabyte. Also a MSATA SSD. Also that one works fine. And this is a M.2 two SSD, I believe it's only 32 gigabytes. I didn't want to spend too much and also from AliExpress and yeah, all three work fine and will let me, um, yep, just use those in upcoming thin client projects. And big thank you to Cooper. He donated a range of graphics cards to the channel. So let's have a look what we have. So the first card, this one is for PCI Express. This is a BFG card. It is the GeForce 7900 GT, but it seems to be an OC model with a slight overclock. And another PCI Express video card. This one is from HIS, and this is a Radeon 3850 with 256 megabytes of memory. And now we have a few AGP video cards. This is a ATI Radeon. Let's have a look what the exact model is. This is a X800 Pro with 256 megabytes of memory. And here we have another Radeon. This must be an X800 or X850. So let's have a look. Yep, it's an X850 XT with 256 megabytes of VRAM. And here we have a classic. This is the G4 6800 GT. This model is from BFG. It's a OC model. It's got a 20 megahertz overclock on the core. Really nice cooler with two blue LED fans. So yes, really awesome video card. So Cooper, thank you for the donation. And yep, you will see some of these cards in future videos. Also to do with thin clients, we've got a few gadgets here. This one is a 90 degree uh, angled uh, SATA adapter. Uh, often on the motherboards there's a SATA port but it's pointing upwards so this just uh, rotates it by 90 degrees letting you plug in a uh, SATA SSD for example and in larger thin clients this might come in handy. This is basically an extension cord uh, for routing SATA data and SATA power to a drive from the motherboard. And we got two PayPal donations. The first one is from Tobias. Hello from Norway and a big thank you for your excellent and inspiring work. I really love your videos. And another one from Thomas. You're always super helpful on Twitter as well as on your channel and the website is awesome. So thank you so much for the donations. If any one of you out there wants to donate, there is a link down below in the description. And I bought this motherboard from AliExpress. This is for the Socket 775. It's the Gigabyte GAP43T-ES3G. And we recently did a video with the Core 2 Quad Q9400 and running modern games on it. And that video was well received. And it was really my first time trying out a Core 2 Quad. And yes, it's very interesting. So we're going to look at things like modding these uh, cheaper Xeon processors and seeing just how much performance we can extract out of such a machine. The motherboard uh, worked beautifully. Um, so Socket 775, it has DDR3 memory support. It supports 130 watt uh, processors, which was important to me. Also, it has PCI Express 2.0 and yeah, nice BIOS with overclocking features. Remember on a Gigabyte board, you have to press Control F1 in the BIOS to get all the uh, options unlocked. So these motherboards from AliExpress, they are used and they come in a generic box and included is usually the I.O. shield uh, and a SATA cable, but that's it, a pretty bare bone experience. And what attracts me at the moment to the Socket 775 are the low prices. You can get motherboards starting at $25, but that's shipped, uh, so free postage, which is fantastic. The Gigabyte board that I went for is a little bit more expensive, $35, um, but you can get cheaper ones as well. 
And here we have a bag of these conversion stickers. So these are required to convert a 771 socket processor to 775. However, you can pay a little bit more and get a processor that's already uh, pre-modded. That's something we will cover in a future video. So if you're not too keen on modding the socket yourself because you have to cut or file some parts away, then maybe spending a little bit better and getting a processor that's already modded for you is better for you. And we have a bunch of thin clients. Now this whole thing started off with the video review on the Wattmann thin client from Germany. Um, and we turned it into a retro gaming PC. That video was well received and the units sold out fairly quickly. So I teamed up with Richard from the US. He runs an eBay store and he sent us a bunch of thin clients to play around with. Now don't worry, the channel is not gonna turn into a thin client central. I make sure that we're working with models that are actually suitable. Very often uh, there's a small uh, change in specifications from one model to another one, for example a chipset, and that doesn't work under Windows 98 and then it's not that uh, suitable anymore. Here we have the WISE CX0. This is a really small computer and there's already a video review on that. So if you're interested, just have a look in the description uh, for the link. We already reviewed the HP T610 Plus. Also have a look in the description for a video link if you wanna learn more about this machine. We turned this into a Windows XP retro gaming PC. It's got a PCI Express slot so you can upgrade the video card. And here we have the WISE, I believe that's the 7010. It is basically the uh, same specifications, it's got the same processor, comes with a little bit less uh, storage and RAM, but it does use a desktop RAM instead of laptop RAM and uh, uh, passively cooled as well, but otherwise it's the same machine, so there's no point doing uh, a separate video on that machine. Here we have the T5720, really looking forward to reviewing this unit, expect the video to be up in a few weeks time. This could be a very decent option for retro gaming PCs. Richard sells the upgraded version with the expansion module that adds a PCI slot, so that opens options for uh, improved graphics, or a DOS compatible sound card. And this is the T5730. Remember how I said that one change in specifications can render a machine uh, not that great for retro gaming? And that's what happened here. So they went with the ATI 690 chipset as well as the Radeon X1250. And unfortunately, there are no Windows 98 drivers for those chipset and for that video card. So that means you've got to go with Windows XP and with a one gigahertz Sempron processor and with this onboard graphics card, uh, it doesn't really have enough performance to be suitable for Windows XP gaming. And here we have another thin client that is not that suitable for retro gaming. It's got an interesting via processor, but it's a dual core. So that means you wanna use Windows XP to take advantage of the second core, but the performance is rather limited with only like a clock speed of around uh, one gigahertz. One of you asked me if the T610 Plus carries digital audio over the display port. So I bought a display port to HDMI connector and yes, you then get digital audio through HDMI, which you can then uh, put into your capture card, which is what I do, or into your television. One of the reps from Onikuma asked me if I wanted to check out one of their gaming headsets. You're looking at $28 and they do have some LED lighting going on here. What I liked about them is how comfortable they are. I was able to watch a whole movie without really any discomfort. I also like that it includes an adapter. So that one is a TRS connector which can go for example in the PlayStation 4 controller but uh, on the PC you use the adapter and you get your standard microphone and headphone ports. Now the USB, it's not uh, a DAC. This one just uh, lights up the uh, LED lights on the sides. And there's also a volume control and a button to mute the microphone. A while ago we did a video with a broken laptop. We removed the screen and we turned it into a desktop, basically um, a keyboard with a computer built in. And I got a lot of uh, comments about getting a LCD controller board and maybe turning the uh, LCD panel into a monitor. So the board has arrived, but I didn't have time yet to uh, try it out and see how it works. And we have a bunch of PCI sound cards. These are all with the purpose of DOS gaming in mind. 
I sold these sound cards on eBay Australia for only 10 Australian dollars, including postage, and that is quite rare. Um, usually in Australia, we don't get anything interesting or the prices are just totally out of whack, often double or triple uh, compared to uh, what you can import. What is interesting about these cards is they've got the ESS uh, chip with the ES uh, 1938S. That one has excellent uh, DOS compatibility. It's also called the ESS uh, Solo One. Haven't tested them in terms of uh, sound quality, but they should work just fine. And I bought three of these sound cards from AliExpress. Now they were advertised with the same audio chip, the ESS Solo One. However, when I got the box, the chipset is different. This one has a 1988S, which is the uh, Allegro one. And unfortunately, uh, this chip, although it's got the same excellent DOS compatibility, it does not have the ES uh, FM feature, so the FM sound sounds horrible. And yeah, this was my first uh, dispute uh, with an AliExpress seller, so that was also interesting um, how that works. It's very similar to eBay. You uh, put in a claim and you uh, go back and forth with the seller, and the seller wouldn't have any of it. He didn't want to do any refund. He just offered one dollar off. So. You then ask AliExpress to uh, step in and the seller has a few days to respond and yep, after that you get your full refund. So if you're not sure how uh, safe uh, AliExpress, is, the AliExpress is, they do have seller protection in place, which is very similar to eBay. And a while ago we reviewed this sound card. This is a new in box from AOpen, uh, Cobra branded and has the Yamaha YMF744 audio chip which has excellent DOS compatibility as well as a authentic FM chip and yeah they sold really quickly they're not sold out the seller has a ton of them around a thousand or so so they're not going to go anywhere anytime soon which is fantastic for you guys um, but I was worried that they might sell out and I'm uh, unable to get any more so I asked if he could put a few cards uh, aside and he sent me a care package with three more of these uh, Cobra sound cards and also he asked if I um, if I'm interested in any other any other sound cards and I asked hey have you got an ALS 4000 sound card and he did so here it is haven't had a chance to try this out yet but looking forward to doing so and we have another PCI sound card this is also one with the ESS uh, solo one chip but these are from Teratech. Now Teratech is a company in Germany so you will likely not find them in other regions so I had to, I had to uh, import it. Um, a little bit expensive on the shipping but I had a chat with the seller and he said look you can uh, buy as many of the cards the shipping is gonna stay the same so I bought six of them and yep they sound pretty good I've tested them all and yeah looking forward to doing a proper video review at some point also this card has the uh, sound blaster link connector which can be of interest to some of you and we got a modern mini computer this is the B-Link X45 premium this was supplied to us by gear best once again details and links down below in the description and this has replaced my previous mini PC and it's basically my home server it runs 24 7 I've got uh, two 4 terabyte USB 3.0 drives connected and I just run a storage spaces RAID 0 array with all my drivers and uh, videos on there and that has been working well for me it's low power consumes around between 6 and 10 watts um, so yeah if you're looking for uh, a home server solution and it also drives my television Netflix YouTube browsing and so on and this has the latest uh, Gemini Lake CPU so performance is a little bit improved compared to the previous model so there you have it guys, these are all the parts that arrived to the computer lab in August of 2018. If there was anything that interests you or you've got questions about any of the items shown, please leave them down below in the comments, I'll do my best to answer them. And that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.